You're listening to the Telltale Channel. Don't forget to check me out on all social media, Patreon, Twitter, Teespring, and Etsy. All links can be found in the description or on my website, telltaleatheist.com. So the first article I wanted to take a look at is a general overview of people of praise, what it is and how it started and what they believe in things like that. The new Supreme Court nominee that Trump just nominated is named Amy Coney Barrett, and she is a member of People of Praise. I've actually mentioned them before. Not on my main channel, but on my podcast. Uh, it was short. It was only like a three-minute segment, and I was talking about. I was reading from their website, pretty much. Now I I've done a little bit of research, uh, not a lot, but kind of preliminary stuff, just kind of get an idea of who they are and what they are and what they believe and stuff. So let's read this article and see what it says about people of praise. This is on Slate. Slate dot com. I scrolled down about halfway through the article because it's talking about Amy Coney Barrett, and I didn't want to get into her yet. We'll get into her in a minute. People of Praise was founded in 1971 in South Bend, Indiana, with a core group of 29 people. The group is part of the Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement, which arose in the late 1960s as a blend of Catholic traditions and Protestant Pentecostalism. By the late 1980s, according to the World Christian Encyclopedia, up to 10 million people in the U.S. were participating in the movement in some way. Some simply participated in prayer groups, but others started groups that emphasized a more holistic kind of intentional community living, not necessarily living under the same roof, but committing to share one another's lives. We're not just praying together, we're putting our lives in common, Craig Lent, the group's current leader, said in an interview. Weird. We're putting our lives in common. It sounds like load of language that mostly the cult members would understand. Uh, I haven't definitively said that this is a cult yet or not. My personal opinion is that it is, but we'll get into why as we read through the article. The original South Bend group now includes about 350 members split into several smaller branches, quote-unquote. About 450 people belong to People of Praise in the Twin Cities area in Minnesota, about 200 in Northern Virginia, and, and other smaller groups operate in 11 other states. The group also operates three Christian junior high schools and high schools in its three largest areas. Lent pointed out that the schools teach the theory of evolution. Again, Lent is the leader, and I feel like he wanted to point out that they teach the theory of evolution to show that they're not evangelicals, when, in fact, they are from the evangelical branch of Christianity, if you will. Uh, it's kind of a parachurch, not really exactly a church itself, but something that a lot of people seem to get confused about is that cults and religions are not the same thing. Cults and religions are completely different from each other. You don't have to be a cult to be a religion, and you don't have to be a religion to be a cult. For example, Scientology is not a religion. Ultimately, when it boils down to it, it's a psychology cult, not really a religious cult. The only reason they have religious status is for tax exemption purposes. There was a whole battle uh, with the IRS that Scientology went through years ago to get tax-exempt status and get that status as a religion. It was a huge thing, and it was really corrupt and disgusting, and they finally won the battle, and it was absolutely wrong that they did. But point is, they're not really a religion. Scientology is a psychology cult. This is kind of a para-religion. It, it's religion-adjacent, but its status as a religion is irrelevant. It doesn't matter if it's a religion or not. It can still be a cult. Oh, yeah, and one more thing. I'm sorry. Lent pointed out that the schools teach the theory of evolution. I wonder how they teach it, too. Aside from all of that, I wonder if they teach evolution only in an effort to debunk it. I'm not even sure. I, we would have to sit in the classrooms to find out. We'd have to look at their curriculum and their textbooks to find out. Maybe one day I will get into those textbooks and find out, though. Or maybe if you're watching this and you're in the comments and you have one of their textbooks lying around because you went to the school or something, you can tell me. Let's continue reading. Lent says its members include Catholic priests and at least one bishop, as well as plumbers, carpenters, teachers, and mathematicians. Interesting. 
Lent himself is a professor of physics and engineering at Notre Dame, where Barrett taught at the law school until last year. In a minute, we're going to find out that they actually live on communes in some cases. Living on the commune is kind of a privileged position that you have to work for, kind of like Jehovah's Witnesses and baptism. It's a privileged position that you have to work to, to obtain in Jehovah's Witnesses' eyes. And I'm wondering if what he's saying here, where he says the members include Catholic priests, bishops, plumbers, carpenters, teachers, mathematicians, engineers. I'm wondering if he's listing the people that live on their commune with them. Let's continue reading. Is this an ominously metastasizing cult or a thriving parachurch organization? I would definitely not use the term cult in its popular sense, said Thomas Sordis, an anthropologist at the University of California, San Diego, who has written about people of praise and similar groups. Anthropologist. Okay, interesting. For one, it's not terribly secretive other than keeping its membership list private. So, what does that have to do with being a cult, being secretive? That has absolutely nothing to do with the definition of cult. It has nothing to do with the bite model or extremism gradient or any other models that we use to determine if something is a cult. A secretive could be a harbinger, a flag, but it doesn't mean that it's not a cult because it's not secretive. Let's continue reading. For one, it's not terribly secretive other than keeping its membership list private. It has a detailed website and Lent, its current leader, who is elected by a board and is term limited, cheerfully agreed to an interview. So it has a website and that speaks to its non-secretive nature, which means it's not a cult. Who fucking wrote this article? This is bizarre. Have they ever talked to anybody in the field of cult research, like at all? Who the hell is this dude, Thomas Zordis, and why is he... He doesn't seem to have any understanding of what a cult is. Like, any. If you're looking at, like, the old, like, 1960s definition of cult, then I, I suppose what he's saying here makes sense. But we have had clearer definitions of cults for decades and decades. This is bizarre. Sordis describes the group as theologically conservative with a hierarchical leadership structure, but Lent said the group was also deeply inspired by the communitarian ethos of the 1960s counterculture. Group members often make an effort to live near each other in certain neighborhoods. Single people sometimes live with families, and there are some households of single men or women living together. Members pledge to donate 5% of their gross income, and many give more with the idea of supporting fellow members. So it's a commune. What they're describing here is a commune. They live together in a commune, and I've actually read more about this outside of this article, but um, you have to work to get into the commune. It's not something that they, that they just let you into. That's extremely concerning. When a group starts living in a commune and you have to work your way up the ranks to, to live in the commune with them, it should raise red flags. Doesn't mean it's a cult necessarily, but it should be raising red flags. After about six years of participation, members can opt to commit to living in the community permanently. There you go. A ceremony that consists of pledging to attend weekly meetings and, as Lent paraphrased it, to care for each other physically, financially, materially, and spiritually. The term handmaiden was chosen in 1971, 14 years before Margaret Atwood's novel The Handmaid's Tale, to evoke the biblical Mary's description of herself as a handmaid of the Lord, or a woman who has an important relationship with God. It has acquired worse resonances, and all we're looking for was a neutral term, Lent said, explaining the recent change to woman leader. Bizarre. People of Praise is an ecumenical group, which means it accepts members from any Christian traditions. The only... Oh, and by the way, they seem to think that that gives them some kind of a credence. Like, they're not a cult because they accept Christians of, of any denomination. Scientology does, too. You can be a Christian and a Scientologist. As you move through the ranks of Scientology, they, the Christians kind of get pushed out, or the Christianity gets pushed out at the very least. Uh, so the higher up you go, you start to learn their creation myths. And you basically have to either accept their creation myths or hold on to your own. 
So Christianity gets squeezed out at higher levels of Scientology doesn't mean it's not a cult just because there are Christian Scientologists. Does not mean that. They're trying to be charitable in this article, but I've read about this group outside of the article too, and it, it is a cult. And it, it's an extremely destructive cult in many ways. I may actually have to do a full bite model breakdown of it at some point, um, because there's a lot here. Let's continue reading. People of Praise is an ecumenical group, which means it accepts members from any Christian tradition. The only theological requirement of membership is to be a baptized Christian and to believe the Nicene Creed, a standard Christian statement of faith. Lent said the group considers a morally wrong act, but takes no position on a policy, comparing it to the way that greed is morally wrong. But what that should mean for policy is up to individual discernment. Uh, okay. Lent sounded bemused by the national scrutiny the group has attracted lately. In a certain sense, it's not really about us, he said, although I owe members a good account if somebody asks me what the group is about. An introductory essay on the group's website sums it up as hard to understand, and that's okay. When I mentioned Barrett's potential Supreme Court nomination to Sordis, he corrected me, saying she was only a circuit court judge. Yes, I said, but she's been said to be in the running for the highest court in the country. I see, he said. He hadn't heard. He paused for a long time. There's always the possibility, he said, that the thoughtfulness and conscientiousness of that community could provide a check to rein her in, in a way that Alito and Thomas don't have. They're just out there on their own. And in any event, he said, she couldn't be any worse than the guys on there now. Wow, super interesting. So I feel like this article was was trying desperately to be charitable to the group, to the People of Praise group, where in reality, there is no reason to be charitable to them. If it's a cult, then it's a cult. If they control people's lives, if they control the information that they have, if they try to put a spin on the information that's brought to them, if they're instructed or encouraged to accept information that comes from the group or the leadership rather than the outside world, if they are having their behavior modified, which in turn modifies their mental state, or if they're living on a commune together with no outside influence to speak of or not much to speak of, it's probably a cult. There's a whole checklist. I talked about this. I've talked about this for five years on my channel. This group is a cult. 